Hey guys, welcome back to the X-Ring. So on today's episode, what I've done is we've been doing uh, some of these video chats talking about hand loading. And I know I had a really, really good load for this, but I think it was a little hotter than what I really needed. And I don't want to burn the barrel out uh, too prematurely. So I've stepped the load back. I've worked on, um, you know, jumping it to the lands and grooves. I've backed that off a little bit. But uh, one of the other things I wanted to talk about were suppressors. So this, guys, is the Silencer Co. Hybrid. They call it the Hybrid 46. And I've had a lot of people ask me about this, especially Rick with Is Your Six Covered. He hasn't owned a suppressor. And he was like, man, if you could just have one can, what would it be? And it would be this one. This is the one can to do it all. It's welded, so you can't, it's got steel and it's got titanium in it, uh, but you can't take it apart and clean it. But the only thing you can do is you can change your end caps. And guys, this will work with any caliber from you know your 17 HMR all the way on up to 4570 government. I mean, it'll handle, guys, it'll handle some monster, monster cartridges, you know, 300 wind mag, all of that. And what you do is uh, they give you the tools and you just take the end cap off. And right now I've got a 30 cal end cap on here. I don't have one for the 264 for a uh, 6.5 Creedmoor, but this works very, very well. And what's really cool about it is you can change the mount systems out. So this one, this is like, this is a spec or, all I've got to do is screw this on. Once I screw this on, then it has a lock ring, just like that, and it's not going to work itself loose. The other thing is, is like we wanted to shoot a 5.56, because this is a 5H24 thread. Um, half 28 is a common variation of that. So all I did was brought another spec or muzzle brake, put it on an AR. I'm going to shoot it and show you that it's really not that big of a difference with that end cap being a 30 cal. And you got to remember those baffles are like a 45 cal or larger. Uh, so it's very effective on the 6.5. We're going to check it on the 5.56 and 223. Uh, but another thing you can do is you can change the backside out as well. Um, now, all those parts, pieces, and components are not cheap, but it gives you the versatility of being able to run it on everything from a pistol. You can also do a direct thread mount. I was at the store yesterday. They had one in the store ready to go. It was a little expensive. It was about $105, uh, but I could do it as a direct thread so I don't have this locking collar. So very, very versatile. Uh, but what I'm here for today is to shoot these groups and see how we, how we can do at 100 yards. And I want to see how these hand loads uh, perform for us. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so while I'm here, I also want to talk about something else because I'm not one that just does something just to do it. And I've seen a lot of guys with precision rifle taking their thumb and putting it on the right side of the grip. And I'm not opposed to it. I can see the benefits of it, but I want to know if it's actually an advantage for me. So I'm going to do a five shot group with this hand loaded ammo on the left side. And then on the right side, I'm going to move my thumb over, which seems to be what everybody's doing now. I don't know if it's just popular or if it actually matters. And I'll do a five shot group that way at 100 yards and we'll see if it makes a difference. Um, like I said, I'm not gonna do it just because it's popular and just because it might feel a little better. I wanna know which one makes me group better. So let's try. All right guys, so five rounds, 100 yards, top left target, thumb conventional position. Guys, so here's the targets at 100 yards. There is a dime for reference, so these are not big bullseyes. Now this was with my thumb on the left side. Felt good, but with me having that grip, I like to pull into my shoulder. I don't like to let it free recoil. If I do this, I can still pull into my shoulder, but I don't know how that thumb's gonna do. I'm gonna let the rifle cool for the next five shots and uh, before we do the next five, and then we'll see what that grouping looks like by putting my thumb on the right side. All right, so five shots thumb on the right side. I'm not going to change a thing. Top right target. Okay guys, so I'm one of those that I am open to trying new things. But I've done this once before, but I've never done it on video. And you guys have seen me shoot this Christensen with these hand loads. And you know that this thing at 200 yards, I can usually get three quarter inch groups. This thing shoots extremely tight. The group at 100 yards, when I shot it the conventional way, for me, I have a good tight group. It's what I'm used to. 
By moving my thumb to the right side, I have a lot of horizontal stringing, something that I've never ever seen in my precision rifles, only because I switched that thumb over to the right side. So what I'm really trying to convey with this, not only talking about the suppressor and the rifle and the hand loads and everything else, is try it, but know why you're trying it. Shoot your groups and check your groups to see if it actually makes you more accurate or if it's just a cool thing to do or if it just makes you feel a little more comfortable, you know, sometimes your best shots are gonna be in an uncomfortable position. You know, even if you're prone, sometimes your neck's feeling strained or whatever, but I'm not gonna just throw my thumb over there just cause it feels better or it looks cooler. Test it on paper, see what kind of groups you get. And for me, this is twice now, and both times the groups were nowhere as near as good as what I'm used to with the thumb on the left side. Doesn't mean I won't try it again, but I sure as heck am not, not gonna try it in competition when I know that I can't shoot the groups that I'm used to shooting with my thumb on the left side. Conventional. This was me resting on the right. You see that dispersion? That is not something that I am used to when shooting. So, like I said, I'm not saying it's bad, I'm just saying it's not what I'm used to, and I'm probably not going to switch over to that uh, just because it's more comfortable or it looks cooler. Yep. All right, guys, so this is the uh, Silent Secure Hybrid. All I've got to do is just unscrew that. Uh, basically, it's a locker ring, and as soon as I do it, you've got a quicker release because you don't have a ton of threads. And we're going to take this AR. I just bought this last night, that mount. We're going to put it on just like this. Once we do that, we just put the locker ring on. We are good to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up a magazine which is regular 223, and we're gonna shoot it. I'll shoot it even with the camera here. I'm gonna let Rick move. There are no sights on this rifle, but I am just gonna shoot it in the direction of the targets over here, and I want you to listen. Is that pretty quiet? A lot quieter than normal. Yeah, a lot quieter than normal. <clears throat> Let's do it again. Let's see if I can hit that steel. Yeah, try to hit something. I'm gonna take my ears out. Yeah, that's way better. Right now I'm running with no ear pro. So guys, even with that big diameter end cap, just like that, oh. it's still, <laughs> yeah, I just muzzled the camera and that's okay, I'm good with that because it can't get to you. <laughs> so what I wanted you to know is it's still going to do a great job of mitigating that sound and that noise. Um, even with that bigger end cap. So this is a good one to look at. Silent Chico Hybrid. Just realize those parts, pieces, and components are going to cost you quite a bit once you start adding it up. Guys, like, share, and subscribe. We'll talk to you soon. Have a good one. How much something like that cost? Um, I've seen them as little as about six fifty, all the way up to nine. <laughs> That's a lot of money. <laughs> all right, guys. Have a good one. See you.